Uh, hello, it's Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks. Um, I'm just going to show you today uh, some of the sticks that I've crafted and uh, their uses and my thoughts on those particular uses for the varying different styles. Now, it's all subjective and other, shall we say, crafters or stick makers or builders um, or even sellers, shall I say, will possibly have a slightly different take on what I'm saying. But in general, I'm always going to come at this from a person who hikes. So, if I'm not going to be a, a renowned expert on shillelaghs, I'm not going to be a renowned um, expert on thumbsticks i'm not going to be a renowned expert on sporting sticks and indeed should we say the very high-end high crafted um exclusive um products that are available for many hundreds and hundreds of pounds at the very top end of this um should we say uh, craft so I will discuss everything relating to what I manufacture, how I manufacture it, and what I manufacture it for. So, um, without any further ado, um, I'll start. Right then, this is a stick that uh, you may have seen the deer antler being attached. Uh, the customer's picking it up today. Um, it's got uh, end caps which have been polished to the white effect, almost like bone itself. And the deer antler has been attached directly to the uh, shaft and um, it's seated very nice and it's gone on very well. The shaft itself is hazel, um, it's nigh on straight, there's a few nice little kinks to provide uh, a little bit of individuality and I've got a nice um, large copper um, end tip which will last years and provide good service. Um, there is, um, should we say, some artwork on it, which is a Pegasus, as you can see, and the Cornish Chuff. Now, both those bits of artwork are individual to the customer, um, so there's no need for me to elaborate on those. Um, it's got, um, should we say, an oil um, saturated coat underneath, and then that was left to dry, so fully dry, and then polyurethane, uh, top coats were put on top of that. So it's got some durability and protection um, It's 135 centimeters and it stands very nice It feels nice in the hand and the customer will be uh, pleased with that and indeed this represents um, Nigh on the top end of what I produce from here um, it's possibly um, some wooden collars that I may put in and obviously artwork uh, burnt on and has in depth or in detail as the customer wants. That then obviously puts the price up. But this is the starting point, shall I say, um, which would be just one piece of artwork, um, which is what I call my top end. Um, this stick will serve the gentleman very well while he's out and about um, with his dog walking. But as a rule, I don't really produce thumbsticks. If I'm putting antler on, it's more for a hiking stick and it to be ornamental, um, which obviously means in itself I try not to go too large because of basically the weight you're hiking. So anyway, this is a nice stick. This is the top end for myself. Um, I do have plans to do, uh, shall we say, some carving of handles and putt on. But that is something I'll have to be blatantly honest, I've not indulged in. That's uh, a side of it I would um, like to engage uh, at a later date and become proficient before I would even consider uh, offering that to the customer. Right then, I'm going to move on now to my bread and butter product, uh, the one that goes to uh, 90% of my craft fairs, my sales, the sold in stall outside my home, and they do randomly appear online on the selling sites now and again. Um, 
I'm not a avid uh, user of those sites, but occasionally I will. But um, yes, uh, this is one of my bread and butter products. It's a hazel shaft. Um, it's carrying my logo. And on here, I have a stag's head piece of artwork running up the shaft. This one has a flat top and it's just slightly beveled. A nice, uh, should we say, flexible lanyard and I love this material. It works very well in all weather conditions. And a nice copper tip which will serve um, any user very well. This one yet again had a very light oil coat and then a couple coats of polyurethane. Um, it's straight, it's lightweight. Now, as I said, I'm a hiker, so most of these are made to be lightweight in the hand. So when you're going along, you know, and you're not using it, it's not a hindrance. Anything too heavy, I mean, if you've got a heavy shillelagh in your, shall we say, seven, eight miles into a hike, the likelihood is, um, you know, you're going to be even, if you don't throw it in the hedge, uh, to make things a lot lighter and a lot more easier going you're certainly considering it but yeah this is definitely a hiking stick it would do well it would give good support um, and it does everything you need to do on a hike and it's a nice little uh, companion for you when you're out on your hike but this is my bread and butter um, should we say hiking sticks of this particular vein Right then, something slightly different, and I do produce uh, a few of these, and um, they do sell very well. That is, basically, because not everybody wants a dead straight stick. I mean, that might sound slightly uh, um, off, or shall I, off a center for a lot of people, in the proverbial sense. But uh, yes, as you can see, this one's got a few kinks and curves in the side profile which is if you're looking at it from the side angle from the straight angle or should we say the working angle where your hand would be holding it and you would be going along it is straight I do try to provide that kind of straightness but the quirkiness of a few curves on the side angle uh, seems to provide people that individuality and that kind of rural um, kind of um, backwater look and feel that a lot of people crave. So yes, uh, this one yet again is manufactured in the same process. I've got a copper tip. Um, it's been oiled. Um, and on top of that, it's got a couple of polyurethane coats. Um, this one is obviously carrying my logo of folklore. And... This one here, it's got a burnt on fox head. This one has got a peaked handle. A peaked handle is very ergonomic for your thumb. As you can see when you're going over and you're holding it in this particular fashion. The only thing is that if you're like, you know, what I call the old boys that used to just toodle down the lane, you know, a couple of them would stand at a gateway and they're talk, you know, talk shop for hours and hours. And they put their hand on it like this and rest on top on the ground. A peaked handle can sort of like, with that pointy bit there, not really suit that kind of stick. Um, a peaked handle is a great stick for if you're on the move and you would want to vary your hand position rather than it being down here. You do have the option to get up here and hold it like that very comfortably. But yeah, this is a, another style of stick, slightly off of centre, shall I say, with a few curves. People do like that. This one's in ash, incidentally, and it provides that nice, uh, I call it like a leopard print um, uh, when it's sanded to this sort of effect. Um, but it's a nice stick and um, a customer will enjoy this one, no doubt. Right then, um, just to provide a little bit of difference, I do provide a heavier gauge stick. Um, there's only so far I go with that because then, like as I've explained, if it becomes too heavy, um, it's not really a viable hiking stick. It's okay to walk around the park or down a lane to walk a dog, 
but you start putting a bit of miles on the, the, the walk or hike or you're trying to um, push yourself a bit more a stick can become shall we say dead weight literally because let's face it if you're mobile the hiking stick is only really an aid for you when you're off-road or should we say in slippery conditions or you're just looking for that little bit of support it's only an aid so um, if you're on good good hard road conditions or track or path conditions you might not be using that stick in its capacity of it touching the ground you may have it in your hand and you may be trying to make good progress and speed while you can so basically uh, this one here is uh, one of my heavier gauge uh, should we say sticks now this is about as heavy as I go it's and I'll just measure it to confirm yeah it's about an inch and a half at the thickest point um, and I would never go any heavier than that and it does taper away quite uh, drastically down towards the tip and yet again a copper tip um, and it tapers down as you can see quite nicely into that and it's showing the wood grain there's a nice bit of bark left in that um, uh, crevice there and that looks really nice effective yet again my logo and this one if you can see as a hair running up the shaft so that's a nice uh, touch yet again a peaked handle but this is a substantial handle on this one I mean my thumb if you can see my hand there is gripping it that is a nice big piece of wood um, and as you can see that is substantial now this would be ideal for walking the dog um, just going down a little footpath um, indeed for perhaps the heavier gentleman or lady that might require um, that little bit of reassurance that uh, they have a more substantial stick this sort of thing would also be great for like um, an agricultural worker should we say you know or somebody just going out around the fields and in the woods that need um, to be able to just like bash and brambles stinging nettles out the way bit of undergrowth it's a more substantial stick and um, it provides uh, everything like I've described uh, in in that format um, for me personally um, this sort of weight if I'm sure we say yeah I'm not the fittest that I've ever been in my life so when I'm sort of like six seven miles into a, a hike I like one of the smaller ones which I've just shown you which offers me the ability to hold it in my hand when I can make good progress and not tax myself because I've still got to get home because half the time I don't have the option of um, <laughs> a ride to get home if I'm walking and then I go to somewhere I've more than likely got to get back so I don't want to overtax myself yeah but here we here we go um, uh, like I said nice stick um, I, I do like this uh, stick myself uh, it feels nice and if I was just going around the village and taking the dog for a little walk something like this would feel nice nice in the hand it's it's sturdy and um, indeed a lot of gentlemen do actually request a heavier gauge stick um, this is by no means getting into the realms of the shillelaghs or anything of that nature but it's still a substantial piece of wood to hold and um, like I said it's you've got to be then aware when you're shaping this of the balance of it and as you can see this one here has a nice 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 line to it and it flows and it looks beautiful with the creams and tans so this this feels nice it feels well balanced and I deliberately took bits of wood off which I felt you know, didn't feel right in the hand and down through the shaft just to make it marry and should we say um, flow better and give better weight distribution so yeah a nice stick this one Right then, I'm moving on now to what um, we call um, our natural collection. That is, it has, as you can see, 90% of its bark left on. It's not overly sanded. It's, it provides the actual texture and feel of the actual wood and bark. Um, 
it's been shaped it's carrying my logo because I do burnt on art I had to remove a substantial part of the bark on this but it looks it looks in keeping with with the actual stick I mean it's it still has that shall we say very rural look and feel um, copper tip again this is like brought tapered down very nicely but yes um, this is very lightly oiled not heavily oiled because obviously um, you've got the bark and the bark doesn't really absorb the oil like um, pure wood does so you're not gaining nothing by saturating it thinking it's going to make its way into the wood only a small portion does um, so yeah it's cleaned off and then given a couple coats of polyurethane so this still has a very very natural raw feel um, and as I would describe it it's got that feel of shall we say the forest and the woodland it is literally um, shall we say a, a not a raw product but it's it's just got that feel that uh, you're holding something from the woods or forest if that makes any kind of sense but yeah um, this is our natural one of our what we call natural collection and um, this one here has a rounded um, crown or head shall I say um, that does provide good thumb support as well and you could actually stand there with your hands and it wouldn't uh, push into your palm um, so that offers kind of the best of uh, both worlds but on saying that obviously each crown or head has its own purpose or use so yeah that's a nice little stick there yet again I've got another one of our natural collection here and this one here if you can see it's got a burnt on hair you have to be very careful when you're burning onto bark because it can leave trenches and bark can peel off. That's quite a difficult burn on that is. Yet again, this is a straight stick. I've straightened this. It's got a copper tip. This one comes down from quite a fat thickness down quite heavily and quite quickly. But that's in an effort to leave a lot of the meat on the stick in itself. This one here has a peaked handle again. And um, yeah... This is a nice size. This would be a nice good hiking stick. This is. It's got just enough uh, girth, shall I say, to be substantial, but it's light enough and it's got that flexibility to be a full on hiking stick. With the added, um, shall I say, uh, look of being of, shall we say, the woodlands and the forest with that natural bark look. Um, I do like these. Um, they do sell, but it's usually, shall I say, to. Uh, the clientele who are purposely looking for something like this unfortunately if I'm on our store we do find that um, if people aren't purposely looking for something like this they are instantly drawn to the um, sanded wood ones because obviously um, the wood burning stands out the grain the the knots and should we say identifying features just draws them to it you know uh, so this here is generally for the customer that is actually looking for something that looks like um, it has that raw from the woods and from the forest look and it certainly does that and I do like these and I really ought to make myself one but yeah that's two of the natural collection there yeah, this is just another uh, uh, small one, what I would call a perfect hiking stick, as you can see compared to the others. Um, this makes a nice, nice, really fast moving, should we say agile stick to be used on the move, should we say on the moors, the footpaths, and indeed in the hills. It's strong enough to offer you some support, um, but it's light enough to, you know, do the job and it's off the height of which is just perfect it's not going to obstruct hinder or get in your way um yeah yet again another one here um there's a a wood burning of a moorland pony here this is from our moorland collection which we sold heavily over christmas um highland cows the ponies and that people seem to love highland cows um you know 
and I could not produce them fast enough over Christmas with that art burning on it. Um, I'm going to touch on another one now. This is slightly different. This has no artwork on it at all, except my logo. I do produce some like this because, believe it or not, some people don't like to have artwork on it. They just want a basic stick, and that's what I've provided here. It's a basic stick, yet again, in the same vein as a true hiking stick as I require, and I believe a hiking stick should be. Nice rounded crown, a nice good tip, has nice flow, it feels good. Um, but this one has a slightly different finish. This has got no polyurethane. This one here is just, it has a saturation coat of boiled linseed oil. That's left to dry, wiped off. I then let that sit for like two days to fully dry in. And then I give it another lighter coat of boiled linseed oil and repeat the process. I prefer sticks in that vein because quite simply um, you can feel the grain. You, uh, polyurethane, or uh, which is like a varnish, it's got a, a coating over the wood. Even though you can feel the wood, shall we say, um, this, because the oil is soaking into it, you still, you actually feel it has that organic feel to it. You're actually holding the wood without a coating of anything on it. You, it feels nice, you know, you can feel every little bit of texture to it. Um, indeed, if you look at, look at that, you can see all the, the very intricate bits from the knots, the waves around the knots and everything like that. And you run your finger down, you can just feel it's smooth, but you can just feel it. And, it, and it's not hindered that feeling with the a coating of polyurethane, which in a sense is almost like a clear paint. Um, but um, yeah, I like these, and this feels very, very, shall we say, organic in, in that vein. Right then, I'll touch on another one. Right then, this is a hiking stick, and this is mine. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because um, it's going to be custom from an aspect I'll show you and that is regarding as I'm going to talk about price. This one has a two and a half inch copper tip. You can see it's holding up, it's been well used, uh, it's been on the trail and it's really holding up, it's doing its job. But that's larger than the normal tip that I put on. So obviously there's a slight extra cost to that to the customer. I've got a longer lanyard which gives me a various degree of flexibility in how I hold this differently. Like I said, you know, you can hold this in a multiple, multiple different ways, you know what I mean? Uh, and you can set this up, um, you know, in different configurations. Um, my generic length will offer, uh, should we say, two or three options how to hold it. but. Obviously, if a customer wants slightly more of the lanyard, obviously that comes with this slightly extra cost. The other thing is, this stick, as you can see, I've got a fox head there, which is burnt on artwork. I've also got a hair head on it as well. And then I've got my stag head. So there's three bits of artwork there. Now that all costs time my personal time um, obviously sketching it on first and then burning it um, and like you say time is money in effect you know you can't get away from that old saying so if a customer is asking for a custom stick and I've had people requesting the grandfather's name or should we say their mother or indeed um, I had one gentleman that uh, just come back from hiking across Africa and he wanted an, uh, uh, what was it, an elephant, a zebra and a lion which I had to burn on and that caused me a lot of, um, shall we say, anxiety because Obviously, I do British woodland animals, and 90% of the time it's muscle memory, and you know, it's straight from the memory banks how to draw it and then burn it. 
I had a lot of attempts and rubbing out before I got that those animals correct. But um, yeah, so basically this is what I would call a custom stick to somebody. Um, they'd have a bigger uh, tip, slightly longer lanyard, whatever um, artwork they wanted. Um, as you can see, it's not just one piece, it's several pieces, my logo, and any writing that they may want on it. Uh, it's, you know, uh, I've had like birthdays, two people, um, people's names, um, even one uh, uh, for a deceased dog, um, a lurcher, and um, the, the actual, shall we say, uh, dates on there that I think that I think if memory serves right where uh, the dates of the the lurcher's birth and you know departure shall I say um, so yeah um, I can do all those things but it all costs money if I'm going into the custom uh, market like like this something like this yeah right i'm going to touch on a subject which is a bit difficult to talk about um but it's got to be done because uh, i make hiking sticks and i will touch on why this is um, a subject that uh, i need to discuss here which you may not hear a lot of other stick makers talk about but i will have i do have to um this is a small craft business so obviously i make a small income Hence, I then have to inform HMRC, which is, in the UK, our tax body. Uh, they regulate your income. Um, they give you, uh, an, an, you know, uh, a set amount of uh, information. You provide them with the information. Um, they go away, work out, uh, you know, tax figures and, and everything that happens within the... Uh, should we say tax authority which is HMRC for us in the UK by doing that I'm obviously selling to the general public and private customers and that so obviously I then have to have a insurance policy now my insurance policy covers a raft of uh, and a multitude of uh, things and terms and conditions the same as a house insurance or car insurance but one of those conditions is uh, and terms is the fact that uh, uh, where should we say illness disability um, should we say and medical conditions uh, are, are should we say um, brought to the fore or or suggested um, I cannot um, should we say pursue um, selling manufacturing or distributing any of my sticks under the pretense that um, they can help they can assist um, just anything along those lines uh, basically I'm forbidden from um, uh, should we say um, distributing my hiking sticks and selling or manufacturing uh, uh, for any medical condition um, or situation um, based on the context that I am not medically qualified or trained which is understandable and I'm not going to pursue that uh, any further in this conversation because you can possibly get the drift and it is modern times and um, we all have uh, a set of parameters and rules we have to follow right just uh, going to a little bit something a little bit more light uh, hard shall I say is that um, around costs now my sticks and I've been told many times I don't charge enough and that's for my stock sticks um, ultimately I do make a small bit out out of it but obviously not in retrospect to the modern world you know paid per hour for the time involved I don't really get that full value back but I enjoy doing it it's kind of like a paid hobby my custom sticks are a different matter whereas I will on negotiate 
what the work that's being done to what I foresee as a reasonable price. And even then, you know, most people have come back and gone, oh, I thought it would be more. Um, I could be missing a trick here. Like you say, by that point, I could say, oh, I forgot I should be putting a bit more on. But I don't. It, it, it is what it is. And I enjoy doing what I do. And I'm hoping I'm representing good value for money. Um, that stick will be with them for a long time, going for their walks. In effect, it will become part of them, a companion. Um, and without getting silly, it's an inanimate object. But after a while, going for a hike or a walk, you will instantly just grab that stick. It'll just become second nature and it becomes your walking companion. I hope that uh, people value the time and effort I put into making sticks and I've shown other videos uh, relating to that but um, I've just quickly shown you a few of the different styles um, and different types of sticks that I produce there um, it's not a huge raft but it's enough for you to get an idea of what I'm doing here and um, and I, I hope people um, appreciate what I do because ultimately as a crafter um, I'm not really making enough out of this to be um, how can I put it this way um, sitting back and uh, reaping the, re the financial rewards from it it's actually more for me it's about the fact other people are using a product that I've produced and that and the ones i've got a little bit of artwork on yes they may not be a van gogh or anything like that or or of that vein but i hope people can see the representation that my artwork on that stick just provides a little bit of individuality and a little bit of shall we say difference and i hope that it gives a you know a little bit of a value to the customer's um, walking experience, you know, almost like that little animal on stick becomes like a kind of, uh, um, I don't know, spirit of that stick where they go for a walk. If I don't know, I could be talking stupid stuff here now. But anyway, um, yeah, I've just shown you some of the sticks and the styles I do sticks in and how I, you know, kind of uh, get to my thinking with them so um yeah i hope that was of some value and you saw a little bit of um what folklore hiking sticks is about there so um all that's left for me to really say is uh take care out there and um happy hiking <laughs>